<laughs> Welcome back, dog gang. I'm about to make myself some coffee, which in many ways are related to this video because trust me, when you have a pharaoh hound, you're gonna feel very tired a lot of the time and coffee is your best friend. Because today, I am gonna talk about why you might feel like a pharaoh hound is too much. They are a lot. So, let's get into it. So the first thing that might make you feel like a fair hound is too much work for you is their energy levels. They are so energetic. Other sight hounds seems like couch potatoes. You give them a good run and they are fine. Fair hounds? Not like that at all. He can go on and on and on and on. If you don't give him mental stimulation, there is no physical activity that will make him tired. So the mental stimulation is your savior. Otherwise you will have a dog that chews on your furniture, that barks at the window. It just goes nuts basically. You need to stimulate your dog because they don't get tired. Their energy levels are high. Except for right now because he's sleeping. But you know what I mean. If you're not prepared for that, a fair hound might feel like too much for you. Let's dig in to number two. You might find a fair hound way too much if you're not prepared for the barking. They bark a lot at everything it could be a smell it could be something they hear if you're not prepared for their barkiness you're in for a treat my friend and that is related to their energy level if you don't make sure to have stimulated them uh, both physically and mentally they will bark at everything so just be prepared for that and next thing might come as a surprise for you i experienced that fair hounds are very mousy for a long time they chew on you on furniture when they are excited when they feel restless when they feel overwhelmed in comparison to other dogs I've had where it feels like when the puppy teeth are gone and their adult teeth are in place, they stop being mouthy. I experienced that feral hounds uses their mouth way more all the time. Like he has a tendency still, if we don't stop him in time, to be a bit mouthy when he gets excited. And that can tire you out to an extent that you cannot even imagine. So be prepared for mouthiness and to redirect them all the time. Now he's a little bit over a year and it's definitely decreased, but in situations of pure excitement, those teeth have a tendency to bite. You might feel very overwhelmed with that. Isn't that right, honey? Apparently I'm disturbing him, which is great because that leads to my next point. Oh my God. Fair hands doesn't do stuff for you just because you ask them to. They are not that kind of working breed that enjoys listening to you. No, 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 no. There needs to be something in it for them. They don't sit just because they know what sit is and because you've done it a million of times. No, they sit if they want to sit. They are super independent dogs that do whatever they want when they want. They don't pay attention to you just because you ask them to. No. Pharaoh hounds are super independent. They do what they please and they don't give a fuck about you unless there is something in it for them. 
So you might feel super frustrated when you're training with a fair hound because you might feel like, dude, you know this command, just do it. Your fair hound will tell you, <laughs> funny joke, yes, I know that command, but I don't feel like it. That's why it's so important with a fair hound to make training fun, exciting, new. Otherwise, they just feel bored and the environment around them is just so much more fun. So that's your challenge as an owner to make training fun and engaging with high value treats, with play, with toys, whatever makes your dog excited, that's what you need to use. So I'm sitting here at my window to talk about the fifth reason a fair hound might be too much. <laughs> because outside, when you're dealing with a sight hound, or in this case, a ferret hound, everything out there is prey. Their prey drive are insane. Everything that moves is a potential prey for a ferret hound. So it might be a leaf. It might be a guy on a skateboard. Everything around you that moves can be chased. For a while, it was really hard to walk with Malik on a windy day because the leaves that was swirling around on the ground was just too enticing. He was dragging everywhere just to get to the leaves. He still does it sometimes when he's bored or a little bit restless, but it's not half as bad as he used to be. That's why it's really hard to have a fair hound off leash uh, because they hunt everything and when they hunt, they forget that you exist. You are non-existent in their world. That's why when I let him loose, it's usually on the beach. It's basically just the ocean and sand. And that's one of the few places I feel comfortable to have him off leash when it's not in a fenced area, basically. So, you will have to deal with a lot of prey drive if you have a feral hound. You might never be able to have them off leash or have a 100% recall because they are, as I said, independent dogs with a high prey drive. So you can understand what that leads to. You are clever, right? And that might be one of the reasons why a feral hound feels like too much for you or for me sometimes even. <laughs> so I made this video basically to be honest about why ferret hounds sometimes feel like too much. There is, so of course, beautiful things about them and funny things about them and lovely things about them, but there are definitely some things about this breed that makes them quite a difficult breed to deal with from time to time. Some things overlap with other breeds, of course, these things are not necessarily unique for only ferro hounds, but I think the combination of these five plus things I've talked about in previous videos, like their confidence levels and that they can be skittish, those things together makes a kind of unique combination why they're not necessarily the easiest breed to train and to deal with in all instances. And I just want everyone who are interested in a ferret hound or thinking of getting a ferret hound to be aware that a ferret hound is not your average breed. A ferret hound is not the easiest to deal with on a daily basis. They take time, energy and effort and sometimes they lead you down a rabbit hole of frustration, anger and just sadness because you just feel like you work so hard and nothing sticks. But I promise you, they're also adorable, lovely, and goofy. So there is both pros and cons with this breed, but before you buy one, just take these things into account so you're not surprised when you get yours. Okay, and talking about that, I think I need some more coffee because we are about to go outside and it is a windy day. So till next time, Take care of yourself, take care of each other, and take care of your dog. 
and I will see you soon.